Sunten! Gata, gata! In this video you will see how Hadzeb prepare bush pig meat after a long hunt. Both we know the Hodza are a modern hunter-gatherer people living in northern Tanzania. They are considered one of the last hunter-gatherer tribes in Africa with approximately 1,300 tribe members. Their native homeland includes the Ayasi Valley and nearby hills. In the previous video you saw how they hunted bush pig. As a hunter-gatherer society, the Hodza have no domesticated livestock, nor do they grow or store their own food. The Hodza survive by hunting their food with handmade bows and arrows and foraging for edible plants. The Hodza diet is primarily plant-based but also consists of meat, fat, and honey. They create temporary shelters of dried grass and branches, and they own few possessions. As we know the Hodza speak a unique language known as Hadzain, which incorporates clicking and popping sounds as well as more familiar sounds. According to their own history, which they preserve through oral tradition, the Hodza have lived in their current environment bordering the Serengeti Plains since their first days as a unique group. This is relatively close to the spot where Homo habilis, one of the earliest hominids, lived 1.9 million years ago. Genetically, the Hodza show one of the oldest lineages of contemporary humans. Contemporary settlements and farming practices currently threaten the lifestyle of the Hodza. They have lost between 75% and 90% of their land over the past 50 years. During the last five years, however, increased worldwide awareness of their situation has led to some significant successes for the Hodza. They faced eviction in 2007 when a foreign safari company won rights from the Tanzanian government to a large hunting concession. The company were forced to withdraw from the deal following an international campaign led by the Hodza themselves along with a coalition of local and international no's. More recently, in October 2011, a Hodza community of 700 people were issued with titles for land encompassing more than 20,000 hectares. It was a historic moment, the first time a Tanzanian government had formally recognized a minority tribe's land rights. Until 30 years ago, the Hodza frequently hunted large animals like zebra, giraffe, and buffalo in the dense acacia bushland of their homeland Yudachini. They shared their home with rhinoceros and lion, elephant, and large herds of savanna animals. Most large mammals have now decreased greatly in number so that today the Hodza mostly hunt dick dick, a small antelope, monkeys, bush pig, warthog, and impala, with occasional eland and kudu. Hodza men traditionally hunted with bow and arrow at dawn and dusk. The bowstrings are made from animal ligaments, the arrows meticulously crafted from kongoroko wood and fletched with guinea fowl feathers. Metal from nails is hammered and shaped into arrowheads and the sap of the desert rose shrub used to coat the tips in poison. Certain rules and beliefs govern Hodza hunting practices. If an animal is only wounded when shot, the name of the species may not be mentioned directly in uttering its 
name, the Hodza believe that the animal would recover and escape. Knife sheaths can be made from impala skin with the scent gland from the leg visible. Hodza also make bags from dick dick leather which are used to carry knives, pipes, tobacco and arrowheads. The Hodza accumulate very few material possessions, those they do have are frequently distributed, sharing is fundamental to their ethos. As a Hodza, if you have more personal possessions, bows or arrows, stone pipes, than you have immediate use for, then you should share them, says James Woodburn. To the Hodza, sharing is not an act of generosity, he continued. It is a moral obligation to give what you have without expectation of return. Wild honey, which constitutes a substantial part of the Hodza diet, is also shared. Hunters follow the horn guide bird to a wild hive. The bird calls to the hunters, who whistle back to it. It flits from tree to tree, stopping to wait for hunters to catch up, so leading them to a bee's nest often high in the reddish grey boughs of an ancient baobab tree. The Hodza have a very intimate relationship with the honey guide, and they'll whistle a certain way to attract it and let it know they are listening, says Daudi Peterson, safari guide and founder of the Ujima Community Resource Team and the Derobo Fund. Some trees have been harvested repeatedly by the Hodza for hundreds of years. They start prepare a bush pig by burn it as you see and after that they start cut into small pieces to make a soap. While many visitors to Africa are familiar with the Maasai people, the Hadzeb of Tanzania's Lake Ayasi region are no less fascinating or representative of African culture. Still leading the same hunter-gatherer lifestyle that has sustained their people for generations, the Hadzeb make use of locally made poisons and ingenious camouflage to hunt. <coughs> Visitors to Tanzania can not only visit with these traditional people, but also witness a thrilling sunrise hunt to see just how these hardy people have survived in the sometimes harsh Tanzanian wilderness for thousands of years. The Hadzeb people live in caves near Lake Ayasi, and their isolation and shrinking numbers have allowed them to avoid the HIV epidemic and other diseases that have spread due to intertribal marriages. An interesting facet of Hadzeb culture is their language. Believed to have some kind of relation to the Bushmen of the Kalahari Desert, the Hadzeb language is a distinctive tongue of cliques that is similar to that of the famous Bushmen. Despite this and their similar physical appearances, DNA testing has shown no relation between the two groups. The oral history of the Hadzeb tribe's past is divided into four epochs, with each epoch inhabited by a different culture. The archaeological and genetic history of the Hadzeb reveals that they are not closely related to any other tribe, although their language was once classified with the Khoisan languages because it has cliques, there is relatively no evidence that they are related. The Hadzeb tribe became part of the German East Africa but soon came under British control at the end of the First World War. Several attempts were also made by the British and the Tanzanian government to make the Hadzeb settle and adopt farming, but all their attempts failed as the Hadzeb people only settled to take advantage of the food provided but leave and go back to foraging when the supply of food runs out.
Anthropologists have described the Hodza as having either no religion or a minimal form of religion since there are no religious structures, leaders, ceremonies, or belief in an afterlife. Hodza men traditionally hunted with bow and arrow at dawn and dusk. The bowstrings are made from animal ligaments, the arrows meticulously crafted from kongoroko wood and fletched with guinea fowl feathers. Before going hunting had Zeb men gather. Until 30 years ago, the Hodza frequently hunted large animals like zebra, giraffe and buffalo. Most large mammals have now decreased in number, leaving them to depend on smaller animals, such as local antelope and birds. Hodza live in temporary residence bands called camps, with about 20 to 30 adults and children in each camp. Camps usually consist of about two to three unrelated nuclear families, 62. Genetically, the Hodza are not closely related to any other people. Among the Hodza of the Lake Aesi region of northern Tanzania, men's work involves hunting large and small animals and harvesting wild honey, and women's work focuses on gathering plant foods. They run only when their partner calls them if they see an animal or shoot it with an arrow. After hunting, they go back to the village. <laughs> Hadzeb women are tasked to gather edible roots and fruits, prepare food with leaves for building, and provide good care of children. Ah. 
I
after I'm not going I like to go back at the bar now and go to work. Miss Yata. I look at like what they talk about Connie, Emma. We got to go to class at that. I get a I'm a big okay. 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 I'm a big Ten up and a night. I wouldn't go to me, my go arm at all. I burn me. Total. I took a quack, 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 a Sitikoma habo. Sitikoma habo. Io ci ta itako kwe ya seme isa do itako ma do uako kai ope e ekwa ekwa asaka ato apa ko kha ko baba alis chokwa sindu ala ta kuma ka bokale I'm a <laughs> I'm going to get a boy. 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 That was a I'm <laughs> That's 
These are uh, man-made, so this is the marketing of what is been trying. You can see knives, different, uh, different tools, they made it, uh, they are arms. So you can see how uh, these tribes are very unique and different from others' tribes. I like this one. This is for, uh, I think, for women. They wear. Also, you can wear. Um, this is good stuff. I like to share with you guys to see how Zabi tribe uh, made this by their arms. See, uh, it is local. Uh, it is culture, and uh, it is very, very interesting as you can see. My different tools. I don't know by their names, but what you can see, you can call it. Uh, you can tell me what it is. It's okay. See this. This is. I like this. Wow. This is very, very good. Okay. So. ไทยอามันน่ะเล่าว่าเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออ
Bravo. La me Oh, 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 oh,
ambil deh. In 27, the first of many government attempts to do so. The British tried again in 1939 as did the independent Tanzanian government in 1965 and 1990, and various foreign missionary groups since the 1960s. Despite numerous attempts, some forceful, all have largely failed. Generally, the Hodza willingly settle for a time while the provided food stocks last, then leave and resume their traditional hunter-gatherer life when the provisions run out, few have adopted farming as a way of life. Disease is also a problem because their communities are sparse and isolated, Few Hodza are immune to common infectious diseases such as measles, which thrive in sedentary communities, and several settlement attempts ended with outbreaks of illness resulting in many deaths, particularly of children. <laughs> Of the four villages built for the Hodza since 1965, two, Idachini and Mangulai, are now inhabited by the Aisenzu, Erek and Tatoga. Another, Mongo Wamono, established in 1988, is sporadically occupied by Hodza groups who stay there for a few months at a time, either farming, foraging or to utilize the food given to them by missionaries. At the fourth village, Endemaga, also known as Mwaniem, the school is attended by Hodza children, but they account for just a third of the students there. Numerous attempts to convert the Hodza to Christianity have also been largely unsuccessful. Tanzanian farmers began moving into the Mangala area to grow onions in the 1940s, but came in small numbers until the 1960s. 
The first German plantation in Hetzeland was established in 1928, and later three European families settled in the area. Since the 1960s, the Hodza have been visited regularly by anthropologists, linguists, geneticists, and other researchers. In recent years, the Hodza's territory has seen increasing encroachment from neighboring peoples. The Western Hodza lands are now a private hunting reserve, and the Hodza are officially restricted to a reservation within the reserve and prohibited from hunting there. The Yida Valley, long uninhabited due to the Tsetse fly, is now occupied by the Tuga herders, who are clearing the Hodza lands on either side of the now fully settled valley for pasture for their goats and cattle. The Datuga hunt out the game, and their land clearing destroys the berries, tubers, and honey that the Hodza rely on, along with watering holes for their cattle causing the shallow watering holes the Hodza rely on to dry up. Most Hadzeb are no longer able to sustain themselves in the bush without supplementary food such as ugali. <laughs> Eba <laughs> 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 <laughs>